What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know how to set up your own TCP server, how to accept incoming connections, how to write from incoming connections, how to read from them and all that good stuff. But before we continue, if you like the videos I'm providing to you, consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comment and jump into my Discord community. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna make a TCP server real quick and um, the first thing we need to do is basically gonna say we're gonna make a server, which is gonna be a structure. And we're gonna give it uh, a listen adder, uh, which is gonna be a string. We're also gonna give it uh, an ln, which is gonna be a net listener. We're gonna make a simple constructor, which is gonna be a new server. We're gonna specify the listen adder as an argument. And we're gonna return a pointer to a server here. We're gonna say a return server. And we're gonna say that the listen adder is gonna be the listen adder we provided. And uh, the listener is for later on. So that's basically a new server. We're also gonna make a simple function, which is gonna be s server start, which is gonna return an error, right? We're gonna start the server. What we're gonna do here is basically say um, that the ln or the error is going to be net listen from the standard library. We're going to listen to TCP, of course, and then we're going to specify the listen adder from the server. And if the error is not nil, we can actually just return the error. All right. And then uh, if everything is all fine, we're going to say that the listener of the server is basically the ln. And what you could do uh, is also a defer here. You could say ln close, right? If the start is closing, uh, it's, it's basically returning, then we're gonna close the listener, right? Good practice. Okay, cool. So what I'm also gonna do here is basically make a quit channel, which is gonna be a channel of an empty struct, right? Why an empty struct? Because an empty struct will take no memory. So we're gonna say that the quit channel is going to be make me a channel of an empty struct, just like that. That's fine. And what we could do, what's going on here? What we could do is basically just wait here. We could do it in a different ways, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna say, we're gonna wait for the quit channel. And if that's done, then we're gonna basically return null. And if the quit channel is basically closed or something, um, then we can defer this listener and everything is getting cleaned up. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is um, make an accept loop, right? Because we're gonna accept uh, connections. So we're gonna make an accept loop. And in this case, we're gonna do this. We're gonna say for, because it's a loop, right? Uh, for con error is going to be uh, s ln accept. And if there is an error, very important here, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna just log out the error. Um, print ln accept error or something, just like that, and then pass in the errors. We and you could return here, but the problem is if we return here, then we cannot accept any more connections. So the best thing to do, what I'm always doing, is just to continue here, right? So accept will basically create a connection, right? If somebody is dialing us, if somebody wanna connect us, we're gonna accept that connection. And uh, yeah, that's basically this dude here on the other side. So we're gonna make another function and that's gonna be a server. And we're gonna call this a read loop. And we're gonna give that connection inside of it. Just like that. Because each time we have a connection, right? Each time somebody is connecting to us, we need to uh, spin up another loop so we can read from that connection and also write if we want, right? <clears throat> so the read loop, basically what I'm always doing, depends basically on your uh, protocol, uh, is basically make a buffer. It's gonna be make me a slice of bytes, uh, let's say 2048 or something. Could be less, could be more, depending on uh, what the size of the messages you're gonna send. Just make it big enough. And then we're gonna say four, we're gonna loop here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the number of bytes we are reading, the error is gonna be connection, read everything into this buffer. And if there is an error and that's not null, we are gonna, yeah, just print this guy out, print the error out, print a len, read error or something uh, like this. And then you could actually choose, uh, depending on the circumstances, you could just return and close the connection and drop it, or you could basically just continue uh, because 
maybe they just malformed some message or something, right? In this case, we're just gonna continue here. You should al also check for end of files and all that stuff, but that's out of scope. I have uh, videos on my channel basically making these things uh, completely from scratch. So check them out if you wanna know more in depth about that. Uh, what we're also gonna do basically here is maybe we could say a defer uh, con close, right? That basically makes sure that if this function returns, we're gonna close the connection and clean everything up. All right, so then we could say that the message, basically, the message uh, the guy is sending is basically the buffer, right? And only the buffer what we have read because most of the time they're not gonna send uh, that large of a message. It could be maybe just a hello world or something. So we're only gonna say that the message is going to be um, the amount we read from, from, uh, from, from our buffer, right? And then we could say uh, println. For example, we're gonna print the string of the message, right? Because this is a, a bytes, it's byte slice. So we're gonna make it a string so we can actually read it as a human. Cool. I think, uh, yes, now in this except loop, what we're gonna do, we have this com. And then we're gonna say go as a read loop. And we're gonna pause in the connection, just like that. Right, so each time we're gonna accept and each time we have a connection, we're gonna spin up a new go routine so it's not blocking, right? So we're gonna handle each connection in its own go routine so we can have millions of connections without any issue. Yes, I think we are set up to do our first test. So we could say that the server is going to be a new server. Uh, yes, new server. We're gonna give it uh, the holy grail of ports, which is 3000. Then we're gonna say server start just like that, and let's do a go run main.go. Wait, I think we have some issues here, are we? Um, this is fine. Read loop, continue, start, what's going on here? Did I not save it? Am I trash? We make this chance struct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there is an error actually. TPC, what am I doing? TCP, and actually it's my bad because what we should do here is basically do a log fatal or something. Uh, so we can actually see what's going on, right? My bad, sometimes, hey. Boom, so basically now our server is started, right? It's, it's basically, boot it up, it's listening to 3000 waiting for connection. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up this terminal here and I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna use telnet real quick. I'm gonna say telnet uh, localhost 3000, boom. Actually, to be honest guys, what I'm gonna do real quick is show you this, right? Because, um, yeah, here. So each time we accept, right? Each time we accept here and there is no header here, it basically means there is a new connection. I'm gonna print that out so you guys can see. So we're gonna say print ln. And we could say um, new connection to the server, something like that. And then we could do this and then say that it's gonna be the connection a remote adder, right? And we can just specify a remote adder here, which is basically a net adder, a net address, and that implements the string interface, stringer interface. So uh, it will be perfectly fine to do it just like this. So I'm gonna boot it up once again. I'm gonna open up uh, this telnet like this, wait. I'll just type it out, man. Uh, Telnet localhost 3000, boom. And for some reason, what's going on here? What am I doing, actually? Do oh, another another mistake. Um, it's so so sorry. It's my bad. So basically, uh, if we start here, what we're gonna do is basically say uh, we're gonna spin up a new go routine. I'm gonna say go s accept loop. Man, what, what the hell am I, am I doing? That's the only thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna spin up this accept loop so we can actually accept connections. <laughs> it's still early. My bad. Uh, go to the middle. Go boom like this, and then. Um, Yes, all right, now everything is fine, right? You see, hey, I'm doing this uncut and route, so you can see you can see uh, me making the mistakes, so you are not need to make the same ones, okay? So it's working fine. So we basically uh, set Telnet and to localhost 3000, which will basically create a new connection to our uh, own custom uh, TCP server. Where is my uh, yes here? So then we can actually start sending messages, right? You could say, uh, hello world, boom, of word, whatever, uh, hello sailor, you see, we are 
we can send messages, we can communicate between uh, servers, right? That's the first thing. But we can make it actually better. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a message channel right here, which is going to be a chain of bytes, right? Because uh, if you're working with TCP connections or connections in general, it's always a good practice to uh, use plain bytes because bytes can basically represent everything you want, right? It could be a proto buffer, uh, it could be a structure, it could be a hop encoded thing, it could be ints, it could be strings, it could be anything, any arbitrary data type. So we have this channel, we need to make this actually here. Uh, we're gonna say that the message channel is going to be make me um, a channel of bytes. What's going on here? And I'm gonna buffer this, right? And the reason why I'm gonna buffer this channel is because uh, we don't, a channel will basically block if it's full. Uh, and if you don't buffer it, it will always block until it's getting read from. So that basically means that if we put up our server, there should be already be some guy on the other uh, reading from this channel. And that's not always the case. So that's why I'm going to buffer. And if you want to know more about channels in Golang, I also have some cool videos explaining this in detail. All right, so we have uh, this thing. So what we could do right now, instead of printing this out, we're going to say, uh, we're going to say here, each time we receive a message, we're going to say MSG, uh, server MSG chan. And we're gonna write, we're gonna write the buffer and into the channel, right? So we're gonna basically each time somebody's sending us messages, we're gonna write them to the channel so we can read it uh, whenever we want, somewhere we want. It doesn't matter because it's a channel. Okay, that's that. So what we could do basically is we boot up our server and then we're gonna uh, spin up uh, an another go routine, just like that, and we're gonna loop for MSG range server. Uh, server MSG chan, right? We're gonna range over the channel and we're gonna just print out print a len. We're gonna say received message uh, from connection and we're gonna say this and then maybe make it a string actually. String message just like this. That's perfectly fine. And then we're gonna start a server. So what we're gonna do also is do some cleanup, right? So each time we close the server, what we're gonna do is also close the S message channel. It's very important, why? Because if we are stopping our server, other people can be still reading from that channel. And uh, we need to notify them by closing the channel is basically saying, hey guys, everybody that's reading from that channel, hey, the channel is closed, the party's over, time to go home. Right. So they can handle um, their logic also gracefully. That's that. And I think we can do, we can boot it up once again, open up our telnet like this. So you can see we have a new connection and then we can actually start saying, uh, writing messages. So you can see received message from connection and you could whatever do, you could chat, you could make a chat at, you could make, you could make whatever you want, right? So that's that. Okay, so what I'm also gonna do is uh, show you this. So received message from connection. I'm gonna make this a printf uh, from connection. And we're gonna say here, percentage s, and this is gonna be the message. And we're gonna make a new line. And we're gonna say, actually we cannot know that, that's true. What you also could do is basically make this message chain. Um, let's make a new structure because Wait, I'm gonna say type uh, message. There's gonna be a structure. We're gonna say from, which is gonna be a string or nay, actually. Well, let's make it a string, it doesn't matter. We're gonna say from, and then we're gonna say that the payload is gonna be a slice of bytes, just like that. And instead of making the message channel uh, a byte, we're gonna make it uh, a type of message, just like here. Uh, type of message, that's fine. And then instead of um, doing this, we're gonna make a message. We could do it like this, message. And we're gonna say that the from is going to be com remote address string, actually. You could make it a net adder also, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna say that the payload is going to be this buffer. Right, so instead of writing just the plain bytes to the channel, we're going to also write, hey, from who is this message? Who is doing this? Just like that. And then, of course, we're going to have some issues here. Received message from connection. 
uh, and that's gonna be the message from and the string message payload right that's that let's test it up so we're gonna start this here then we're gonna basically open up our talent once again you see it's working and then we're gonna do this right so now you can see we received the message from a specific address and then we can see that what the payload is it's the hello right you could say um, whatever man foo bar boom you see we get the foo bar message let me make this a little bit smaller right so that's working so now we have one connection but let's say we want to open up another connection that's perfectly fine we could do that let me open up a new terminal here i'm gonna say telnet uh localhost 3000 boom just like that and we can see here that we have a new connection right so this is a connection but this is also a connection so there are now two people connected to our server and we can also write a message to this guy uh, gg network i don't know boom just like that and then we can see we received a message from this guy right and you can have basically connect with as many connections as we want all right the last thing i'm going to show you is basically let me close up all these shenanigans here this is telnet and i still don't know i'm 36 over 15 years of experience and i still don't know how to close telnet can you imagine so what we're going to do is i'm going to just close this guy i know everybody's closed that's fine Yes, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I know how to close Talent, of course, but it's with, uh, I don't know, uh, it's out of scope. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do, basically, each time we're receiving a message, right? What we're going to do is we're going to make a ping pong, right? So we're going to write back to the connection. And how do you do that? It's very simple. Uh, we could say, com, write, bytes, and let's write, um... We're we gonna write here. What's going on? We're gonna write thank you for your message. Boom. So each time it's gonna send us a message, we are gonna reply with thank you for the message, right? Hey, we are polite, right? We are good humans. Cool. We're gonna boot up this guy, open up this 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 terminal here. We're gonna say uh, tell that once again boom so we are connected that's perfectly fine and then we're gonna say hello boom and then you can see we get a message back right we get a message back from uh, from our server you see each time we, we're printing stuff uh, it's responding us with thank you for the message hey. you see that's basically TCP shenanigans in Golang uh, not big of a deal but of course you need to know how to structure stuff and how to make things uh, somewhat idiomatic. And this is basically my approach. I always use the same pattern over and over, an accept loop, a read loop. Um, and what, what I also a lot of times do is basically make here um, in my server, is basically maintain a map of connections, right? That's important, I'm, uh, you could say peer map or something. And then I make uh, a map of, for example, strings, or you could make it a net adder, depending on what you want. So basically you can uh, identify the connection and each time you get a message, you could look it up in our peer map and then you could, hey, you could do a lot of, of cool stuff. And like I said, I have a lot of videos um, on my channel doing TCP. And if you really, really want to know, if you really want to be the distributed king, then you can go to my Patreon page where I'm building a complete decentralized um, file storage. And we are also building a complete peer-to-peer -peer lib inside of that um, inside of these videos, right? 17 episodes, so you could check that out if you want. Right, so that's basically uh, what I wanna show you, how to make a TCP server. You can make it as complex as you want, but this is everything you need to know to get started. If you liked these videos I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments so we can boost this video up into the YouTube algorithm, jump into my Discord community, so if you have questions, I can single-handedly respond to you. Thanks for watching this video and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future live streams or videos. Bye bye.